What's up guys, my name is Angelo, and there is none good but one, and that is God. I had the chance to travel the country of Israel for 14 days, and today I want to share with you my Israel Top 10. Let's start off in Caesarea. This insanely massive and crazy beautiful ruins lie right along the Mediterranean Sea, and this place served as the Roman capital of Judea. It was built by King Herod the Great in honor of the Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar. Now it costs 39 shekels to enter. As soon as you make your way in, you'll pass through this short corridor until you are outside once again. Despite being destroyed by the Arabs in the 7th century, there is still so much detail and preservation in this site. Not too far from the entrance, there is a headless statue sitting in front of a pool, which will definitely spark your fire for exploration in this place. Now if you want an epic view, proceed up the stairs near the pool and you'll get a wonderful view of the ruins and the ocean. The ocean definitely adds to the beauty of this place as the pristine blue color of the water contrasts very well with the yellows and the oranges of the ruins. I can imagine arriving to the port by boat in ancient days and marveling at this place in its full glory. Now as I said, this place is just huge. But what is really amazing is that you will have the majority of the ruins to yourself. I really enjoyed exploring the ancient tunnels under the ruins. You really get this surreal vibe as you go through them. After wandering through the tunnels, you will come out near to this wonderfully preserved bathhouse. The pillars are still standing and there are detailed patterns on the floor. Could you just imagine chilling right here with that view of the sea in front of you? Now the huge stretch of land in front of the ruins is called the Hippodrome. It is 400 meters long and 200 meters wide. It was used for chariot racing and other public events. It would be cool to see some horses just sprinting along there. As you make your way down farther, you can see some ruins jutting out into the sea. This is called the Coral Palace. It was just an exquisite palace built for King Herod and his guests. Banquets and other parties were often held there. Finally, let's make our way to one of the most impressive amphitheaters in the world. It lies at the far end of the ruins. It is incredibly well preserved and judging from the look of the stage, it seems like concerts and other events are still held there to this day. Now for Christian pilgrims coming out here, one more thing to note is that the Apostle Peter also journeyed to Caesarea because a Roman centurion named Cornelius had a vision and Peter was sent to him to share with him the gospel of Jesus. Next, let's head to the Bahai Gardens. I have to say that these are the most beautiful gardens I have ever seen. The gardens are located in the north of Israel in the city of Haifa. The gardens were completed in 2001 and are a world UNESCO heritage site. One of the most eye-catching features are the terraces that ascend up Mount Carmel. Each terrace is incredibly well done and geometrically pleasing to the eye. You will also notice the building that sits near the base which is known as the Shrine of Bab. Now all people are welcome to visit the gardens. It is insanely peaceful and you'll definitely get a workout going up the stairs. After that, we are going to Rosh Hanigra. This is a white chalk cliff face that opens up into some epic cave grottos. It costs 48 shekels to enter and you will start by taking a cable car down to the grotto entrance below. Once you reach the bottom, you can go left to see a short video explaining the history about this place. It's a nice show to watch and it is located in an old railroad tunnel. Now make your way back and enter into the cave grottos. Now you are really in for a treat. When you reach the end, you'll see this wet rock area. Just wait a minute because when the light from the sun no longer shines, you know a huge wave is coming in to smash into the cave wall right in front of you. It's so awesome, I stood there 20 minutes waiting for the waves. It just never gets old. To the right of that, you will find this picturesque hole in a cave wall that will give you a beautiful view of the ocean water outside. I have no doubt you will stay here for a while trying to get that perfect Instagram picture. Now to the right of the entrance of the grotto, you'll see a set of stairs that lead up to a parting up the white cliff. Go up through it and be prepared to witness an epic view. As you make your way around the cliff, you'll enter into more cave grottos and also some more epic views of the Mediterranean Sea on the outside. Now from the parking lot, you'll notice a road that goes down to the beach. You can definitely go down that road and get a different view of the white cliff. I was just chilling down there getting some pictures when out of nowhere a massive wave smacked the cliff and water just went everywhere all over me. Another interesting fact about Rosh Hanikra is that it is located right on the Israel-Lebanon border. Now let's make our way to Keshet Cave. This is the coolest off the beaten path in Israel. Now this is a remnant of a large collapsed karst cave. This cave is 10 meters high and 15 meters wide. The most impressive feature is the natural land bridge. 
that form due to water eroding over the course of time. Now to reach this place, you need to drive here. From the parking lot, it is only a 10 minute hike before you reach the cave. This cave is popular for rappelling. You'll also get epic views of the upper Galilee countryside as you gaze outward from above. You can also wander off in other directions and explore to your heart's desire. If you have a car, which I strongly recommend that you rent one in Israel, then you should not skip out on Keshet Cave. Now we are going to my favorite place in all of Israel, Nimrod's Fortress. I loved this place. Let me repeat, I loved this place. This insane castle is located on a mountain in the northernmost part of Israel. It was built by the Ayyubids, which ruled most of the Middle East in the 13th century. It gets its name for the mighty hunter Nimrod, the commissioner of the Tower of Babel written in the book of Genesis. The view from within the castle looking out into the valley below is just captivating. Now looking at it from the top, you can see just how large it is. It is incredibly well preserved and has been abandoned since the 16th century. When I went, I was the only one there which made the experience so much more epic. The ruins contain a total of 14 watchtowers and you can still peek through the slits that were used to fire arrows from. One of my favorite moments was when I found this perfectly intact winding staircase that descends into the dungeons below. I let my mind wander as I explored the depths of this castle. I kept thinking I was in an Indiana Jones movie and I was going to finally stumble across some long lost treasure. There are so many tunnels, stairs, and doorways to go through. I was constantly in a state of wonder. Traversing the ruins from the outside is also a lot of fun. There are many high up places you can ascend to and get some nice views of everything below. You'll find yourself on some pathways adorned by many trees. I came across this one tower with a hole in the ceiling and it looked like something straight out of a movie scene. There are plenty of signs around the castle to tell you what each location is. Another crazy spot is called the secret entrance which is this long hallway that descends to the base of the castle that was used in case of an attack. I truly adored exploring this place and you cannot miss this place when you're in Israel. Seriously go to Nimrod's fortress. After that, let's go to the Dead Sea. This massive span of ridiculously blue water also cannot be missed in Israel. I have never seen water such a beautiful blue color such as this. I can't really describe it, but the color is so unique and breathtaking. I couldn't wait to go in the water to see if you float, and it is true. It really is impossible to sink, and it is the craziest feeling ever. One thing you need to know is that after you leave the water and it begins to dry, you will have salt caked all over your body. It looks like you got a bad case of dandruff. I also strongly recommend you bring a drone with you so you can get some really sweet aerial photos. Next, let's head to Masada. This fortress lies not too far from the Dead Sea and it is one of the most visited attractions in all of Israel. This place is the location of the last stand of the Jewish revolt against the Romans. It was built by Herod the Great in 37 BC and was taken by the Romans in 73 AD. One thing I must say is that the views from atop the fortress are just extraordinary. There are three different epic views that you must see. The first view is at the nose of the palace. The second view is near the back of the fortress. And the third and best view is where the Romans built a ramp to breach the fortress. This view is so good that it turned to one of my best photos I took in Israel. A few of my favorite spots in the ruins was the Byzantine church, the massive open field, the palace, and a super cool underground cistern that makes for a perfect photo spot. Now to reach the top of the fortress, you can hike all the way to the top of it via what is known as the snake path, or you can take the cable car up to the top for a fee. The price will be higher taking the cable car, and Masada was the most expensive place I've visited in Israel at 77 shekels. Now let's head into Bethlehem to see the Church of the Nativity. This place is known as the birthplace of the Son of God and the grotto in which it is located is the oldest continuously used site of worship in Christianity. This church was first built in the 14th century AD by the Roman Emperor Constantine. It was destroyed by the Persians in 614 AD but rebuilt again afterwards. When you do reach the grotto of the birthplace, you'll see it indicated by a hole surrounded by what looks like a star. Right across from this is said to be the manger in which the baby laid in. Now this place was super congested and crowded with tour groups. Some people said they waited up to three hours to see the birthplace. I recommend that you visit this place as early as you can. You do not need to go with a tour group to see the church. You can take bus 231 by yourself 
which goes from Jerusalem and passes into Palestinian territory. Start at the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem and walk a short distance to the Hanavim Terminal, board the bus for five and a half shekels, ride the bus to the last stop, and then proceed on foot to the church. Now while we're still in Palestinian territory, we are going to visit the Marsaba Monastery. This place is jaw-dropping beautiful. It's so epic, I don't know the words to describe it. It is a Greek Orthodox monastery built in the 5th century AD by Saint Sabas the Sanctified. This monastery is known for its strict rules and isolation. The small community of Orthodox monks there live a life of prayer and contemplation and they are not allowed to have contact with the outside world. When you set foot on the grounds, you'll notice the beautiful Kidron Valley below. You will also see many caves and holes all throughout the valley. I descended the stairs leading into the valley. I crossed the bridge to the other side. I then proceeded to scale the mountain and I got some of the best views I have ever seen in my life. This monastery is said to be the oldest continually inhabited monastery in the world. Lastly, we are going to visit Korazin. This set of ruins is located near the Sea of Galilee and it is famously known as one of the cities that the Christ cursed for their unbelief in him. It is incredibly well preserved and you will most likely have the place all to yourself. I covered this place already in my Sea of Galilee top 5 video so make sure you check out that video. These ruins are very impressive and the words that stayed in my mind the whole time were the words spoken by Jesus, woe to you. Korazin. Well guys, that is going to do it for my Israel top 10. I love this country so much. Definitely add Israel to your travel bucket list and you will not be disappointed. I have some more videos on specific places in Israel such as Jerusalem and the Sea of Galilee. So go and check out those and I will see you in the next video.